Okay, so I'm sending you this link on WhatsApp, everybody. Vishal and Devesh. Are you there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm just sending you the link now. So did you get it? Yes. Okay, cool. So let's join on that link. And I think then everybody can see what's happening. Okay. All right. So th uh, that is basically, uh, let me just share my screen with you for a second so that you'll be able to know what's exactly happening. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. All right. So basically, I'm giving you a link for this video. I'm going live here. And so whatever I'll be doing on IntelliJ ITE and my audio, everything will be here. So you'll be able to hear everything and you can uh, connect with me through the comments below. So here we have the first participants in there. So let's jump on to that link. All right. So I'll just go ahead and disconnect the call. You can jump on there and say hi. All right, guys, so uh, I think we are done waiting for people to join. So let's begin the course. All right, so first of all, thank you very much for joining this course on Kotlin data types. So in this video, we'll be co going to cover a bunch of things such as, well, uh, so I hope everybody got the course contents. So in this video, we'll go uh, and see what are what is type inference property, what is the string interpolation property, how to define a simple for loop, and string arrays and ranges. So let's jump onto it right away. All right. So here I'm using an IntelliJ IDE, which you can download it using uh, by going to JetBrains. I'll just share the link with you. Brains, IntelliJ IDE. So all this link will be available for you in the description below for this video as well. So here, 
here you go with the link so you can download this id at this link here okay cool so now i'm just i've just created a simple file here learn kotlin data types.kt and in which i'm creating a new main method so as you know the main method is the entry point for all the java programs and similar is the case for kotlin as well okay so i will just type a simple hello world program here which says hello world and i can run this program by clicking this green arrow icon over here and when you click on it i can also see a shortcut command here for running this file so on windows it will be different it will be control shift f10 and on macbook it will be control shift r so let me use the shortcut and run this program Okay, it's taking a little bit of while to compile this program. I don't know if it takes a lot of time to compile Hello World. All right, cool. So we can see Hello World in the output. Okay, so we can declare variables in Kotlin using a val keyword or a var keyword. So I'll explain the difference to you. So a val is a immutable data type, which means that you will not change the value in future. So let's say I'm creating a number, val number is equals to 10. So now in future, if I have to update the value of this number, I cannot do so. And Kotlin compiler also gives me a compilation error. A val cannot be resigned. That is because var is immutable. So in case you want to declare a variable whose value can be changed in future, you can do so by creating a variable using var keyword. So I'll just say var name is equal to color. So this is, I'll say a mutable type, which the value can be changed here and the value cannot be changed here so this is the two ways to declare a variable in kotlin so now you can see that i did not define any data type for this so that is called as the smart cast so without defining any data type kotlin comes to, uh, uh, kotlin compiler is able to predict which kind of variable is this so based upon this value it is known that the number value is of type integer so let me print this value for you number is uh, type in the number here like this and you have the ER, just the way you do it in java so let's run this program all right so it didn't take a lot of while here to run the program really happy so the number value is 10 here. All right, so when you press the control button and hold the mouse over this, I can see the number is a type of an integer. So this is one of the features in Kotlin that you don't really have to define what kind of data type this variable will be holding. Uh, if you want it to be specifically an integer type, you can do so by typing the colon and the type of the variable so here you can see that you are getting uh, it's a little grayish in color which means that it is not really necessary explicitly given type is redundant here so you can remove it as well because it's pretty obvious to kotlin that this is a type of integer all right so we'll go ahead and remove this okay so let's see what is this uh, a bit of a suggestion i'm getting here from the ide let's see what it means so it says convert concatenation to template so this is again another one of the features of kotlin where we can use instead of using the concatenation operator like java i can remove this and put the number inside the double quotes inside the string 
and use the dollar symbol to use the variable. So here what's happening is that it is using the string interpolation property. All right, so this variable is directly becoming a part of string because of the string interpolation property of Kotlin. So we can also do something like this, println name is, and use the dollar symbol to tell the compiler that I'm starting to type a variable here. And I can select name here, that's it. And as you can see, there are no semicolons here. The semicolons are not necessary in Kotlin. So you can obviously omit that as well. So let's run this program. And you can see the name is current and the number is 10. So this is the two ways where you can create a variable. All right, so let's jump on to the next part of this video where So by the way, I just wanted to ask you guys if you guys are able to, uh, okay, so we have a question here, do Kotlin works with Android Studio recommended to use IntelliJ separately? As I think Android Studio is also powered by IntelliJ. Yes, so uh, you are correct here, Zipinder. The Kotlin works with Android Studio and Android Studio is built on IntelliJ IDE itself. So this IDE IntelliJ is, uh, used as a base for Android Studio. So when you use Android Studio, everything will be same. All the features will be same. All the shortcuts will be same. And the look and feel, everything will be same. So you don't have to worry about it. It's IntelliJ and Android Studio are one of the same things. But oh, the only difference is that Android Studio comes with an Android SDK. So I hope I answered your question. Cool. So if anybody else as well has any questions, please do comment out and I will get back to you. All right, so here I have a bunch of classes here. So let's see what else we can check in. All right, so there's a lot of things. Okay, let's talk about the variable, different variable types. So we learned how to create an integer type and we learned how to create a string type. So let's see how to create a floating type variables now which can take decimal values. So I can go ahead and type well pi is equals to 3.14. So now by default, this literal value is, uh, this constant value is by default a type of double, which is another data type. And if I need to be it to be specifically for float, I can just add lowercase f here. Now it means that this variable is of a type float. So I believe most of the people who have some background with C and Java, they might already be, uh, be knowing about this fact, but it's just good to mention if uh, you're not aware about that. So here I can write the pi is, and use the dollar annotation pi. And when you click over here, you can see it's a float type. And when you remove the F, it is a type double. Okay, so you can also go ahead and print pi like this. And we can do something else here. We can convert this pi to an integer. So when you click uh, type in dot and type to int method, so you see that this changes to a little bit of uh, expression here by using this curly braces. So it's good. If you are using just a variable, you don't have to use a curly brace, but if you're using or calling any methods or uh, trying to use an expression here, it's good that you have a curly braces. All right, so here pi to integer. So we'll run this program and see what happens. So basically the decimal point will be removed and three will be the answer. So pi to integer is three. 
okay so similar is the way we can declare a character so let's call a equals to capital a so a is a type of a character and we can print that the value of a is dollar symbol a and converting char to integer which is dollar symbol a dot to integer so now what exactly happens happens is that the ASCII code for this value a will be so let me change this to single quotes so that it is a character now so this is a difference between a string and a character for a string you use a double quotes and for a character you use a single quotes so a here is of type character so i'm converting a to character and it should print the ASCII code for this capital A. So it goes like this that capital A stands for 65 and so on and so forth like B stands for 66 and then C stands for 67 and so on till Z. Okay so let's go run this program. Alright, so the value of A is capital A and converting character to integer is 65. So if we change this to let's say Z here and run this program, we'll see different values. So the value for this variable A is Z and converting character to integer which is 98. Alright, so this is about, uh, this was all about conversion of data types and we can jump on to strings here for now. Let's see how to uh, create different methods on call different methods on string. So let's uh, create a variable here. Well, string one is equals to hello. And then we can create a new variable string two is equals to word. All right. So now we can go ahead and create a new variable, variable we have three, uh, string three which is will be equal to string one plus string three. But definitely we know there's a uh, better way to do this by using the string interpolation property. What we can do is we can type in here, uh, start the string and end the string. And in between that, we can use the dollar symbol here remove the plus symbol, the concatenation operator and add the dollar symbol. So let's print this str3 is equals to dollar symbol str3. All right, let's run this program. So it should print hello world. Okay, so you can see the string three is printing hello world here right now. Okay, cool. So let's do some operations on string three. Let's find the length of this string. So the length of string three is like this. All right, and then length. Okay, and then we can call, let's see what other methods we have for string. So by typing in dot, we can access a bunch of methods which can be used for a string. Let's try to create a substring for this method, for this uh, string. So substring and I want, so there are three different methods for this and I can choose whichever I want. Let's type, choose the first one. So we are giving the starting index here, which will be like this, H, E, L, L, and O. So the index starts from 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So here we are saying that the starting index is 2. So the starting index 2 stands for L, and whatever is in ahead of it till the end of the string, that part will be stored here. So this will print L, L, and O. Let's run this program. Okay, so this is printing LLO and till the end of the string, which is LLO word. Okay, so let's look at another substring method. 
and type in the starting index and the end index. So here this means that the string will start from the index 0 and it will go until the second index minus 1. So it will print h and e. So it is not including the index 2 and if we change it to 4 it will print till h e l l all right so let's run this program so that's another substring method so there are a bunch of substring methods and please feel free to try all of them and see what happens all right so let's see what else we can do with a string c dot so we have capitalize here at which will capitalize this text and okay so um, all right let's talk about arrays now so the way to create an array will be like this I'll say uh, let's name it as numbers and type in error array of and we can type in a bunch of numbers here 3 4 5 like that and see there's no limit here I can go on to any limit so this is the way to type uh, to create an array but I can also jump in and uh, add some different data type values like 3.14 which is a floating type uh, value which is different from integer value which I have been providing and I can also go ahead and type in a string here which is a different type of value so this kind of an array is a multi type array it's not a single data type array and if you want your array to be a single data type numbers only I can create an array like this array of integers so I can specify the return type for this array that I can I will accept only integers now so when I can pass the numbers here which is perfectly fine but if I try, try to pass any string I will get an error from the compiler so it says that type mismatch error required is integer and found is string so go and remove this now it will be perfectly fine all right let's print this array numbers array is symbol numbers so let's print it out so here you can see it's printing something totally different from the values of this array so this is basically the object it is not printing the values it is printing the name of the object so to, in order to print the values of the array we have to create a bit of a for loop here so we'll create a for loop and write so this is uh, the for loop from uh, C and Java are totally different so this is in cotton so we just type variable here for X and using a keyword in numbers and then in the body I'll write printl in statement and type in x with the dollar symbol. So this means the value of I'm iterating each of the values for this array numbers and printing it out here. So ideally it doesn't make sense to have the name as numbers. Let's change this name to something more convenient. So I'll change it to my array. Okay, so you can change the name by using a shortcut shift function and F6 on Mac and you can also check it out for Windows as well. Alright, so let's run this program and see what happens. Alright, so this is the area which was which we were printing earlier, which is basically the object name it's not the value so we are printing the values here like this okay cool so let's print what is the size of the array 
size of array is numbers sorry my array dot size okay so you can see these curly braces appeared automatically so whenever you are using an expression here you have to use a curly brace otherwise if you're just using the value of the of the variable so just the dollar symbol will suffice okay let's run this all right so we can see the size of array 7 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 okay so uh, let me tell you something really nice about is keyword so it's really helpful is keyword so and you can also see how to create a boolean variable it's very easy nothing fancy here so i can just say is even equals to true or i can even give it a value of false so boolean takes only two values e true or a false value so now i can check whether this is even is a type of a boolean this variable is type boolean or not so you can type here like that is is even variable a boolean type and i can type in here using an expression by using the curly braces after the dollar symbol and type in the name of the variable first is even is boolean so now this expression will return me a true or a false value based upon the data type of this variable and we can do that for previous other variables also so is the variable a a character type or not so is this correct variable a is type char or not so you can check perform the checks for the variables here but you can see here we are getting a bit of a suggestion here it says check for instance is always true because cotton compiler already knows that the a is type of a character here so we don't need to do that so if i remove this and type in a string here so i'll get to error straight away because the cotton compiler knows that these two types are incompatible so hence we're not checking so in case you're using this uh, in for your factory classes you're creating two different types of classes so this is keyword will help you very much okay so we can convert it back to string all right is sorry cat type all right so let's run this program okay so is even variable is a boolean type yes true is a variable is a character type yes true okay so i think we are done for kotlin arrays here and we can jump on to ranges so this is another one of the very nice features of kotlin so let me just quickly jump onto the chat and see if you have any questions do kotlin works with android studio okay we did this how does kotlin compilation etc work the underlying mechanism okay first of all we'll see that uh, so how does the kotlin compilation work so basically uh, kotlin is a jvm uh, like a java inter interoperable language so i will just keep on typing it here so that you can see as well so kotlin is a interoperable language which means that so what's the meaning of interoperable i'm not sure what the spelling here but interoperable i guess yeah okay so kotlin is a java interoperable language which means that we have a dot kt file here and this kt file will be converted into a dot class file by using the kotlin compiler so now this dot class file is exactly the same file which is created by 
uh, in Java. So let's see first how Java code is compiled. So we have a .java file and then we have a Java compiler and then which is responsible to convert it into a dot class which is also called as the bytecode. And this bytecode is exactly same to the bytecode generated by Kotlin compiler. So we have a .kt file here and in Java you'll have a .java file. So they both will generate a .class file which will be nothing else but a bytecode which can be understood by a JVM and it will be used to run the program. So everything else is the same. It's just that we are using a .kt file to generate the same .class file. Okay, I hope this is answering your question, Vishal. Okay, uh, Zipinder says, can we do a bit slow? I am testing things parallelly as well. All right, please feel free to test. If you have any question, please comment here. Size is memory size or total items. Size is the number of total items here, Zipinder. Can I know which, can I know any function which can return what type of variable is to have more understanding testing different values and testing which data type it is, maybe kind of type of. Yes, so exactly is up in there, here is your comment question answered here using this is keyword. So this is the way how you check Sorry. So the way the, okay, so in Java, I'll say like that. In Java, you have an instance of operator. And in Kotlin, you have the is keyword. So both work in a similar fashion. So if we were coding in Java, we will write println is a variable of type character. I will write instance of instead of is. So in Kotlin, it's quite short. All right, cool. So I hope that answers your question. And up in there, next thing is not sure what exactly we have over here. Okay, so th uh, that's it. So in Kotlin, you have the is keyword. Okay, so the next question is, so why to use Kotlin given we have Java? What advantage does it give as it compiled to Java class only? So that's a very nice question from Vishal. Let me just uh, quickly run through the advantages of Kotlin over Java. So the first advantage is that it, the first advantage is like more of a, uh, you know, the same kind of functionality which we are getting over in Kotlin. So it is interoperable with Java. And the next feature is that uh, the code that we have to type to create a same kind of feature or functionality is very less code. So in Java, if you write 10 lines of code, you can do the same thing in basically one line of code. And I'll show you that in the coming videos. I'll show you some example right now after this. So uh, I'll give you the proof for that as well. So, okay, so that is one thing. You have to, <coughs> sorry, less code. So <coughs> oh, let me just grab some water. Yeah, so you have to write very minimal amount of code to achieve what you are doing in uh, say in Java. So this is achieved using the data classes. So in Java, you have Poja class where you have to create all the, so let me create a class here, class user. So this is an example of Java, what I'm typing. A user, you create a variable let's say integer age 
and then you type in the name string name is equal to some value all right so and then you create the getters and the setters and is equals method and a bunch of other methods like to string so you do a lot of stuff here to create in the java folder class but with kotlin you don't have to do a lot of stuff here you can just write a data class user then type in the into the constructor directly that you have an age of type integer and you have uh, let's say a name of the string type so that is it that you have to do it's just basically coming down to one line of code and it will also generate the getters and the setters the is equals and the to string in kotlin by itself so you don't have to worry about that so that is one of the great advantages in kotlin all right so kotlin also has a very good feature called teens so i'm not sure if you have uh, uh, done multi threading using java so that is one of the uh, like really downside of java where you have to handle a lot of threads but with coroutines you don't have to worry about creating different threads so you can use the coroutines feature uh, let me type it correctly coroutines okay so you can use the coroutines feature to do multi threading so all right and the next thing is lambda functions so the functional programming approach which kotlin brought in was really really appreciated by the developers all over the world which was missing in java which is present now in uh, starting java 9 i guess but uh, it was too late as most of the android uh, was supporting only till java 8 or java 7 perhaps so now lambda functions were a really really good addition to kotlin programming so these are the functions that i remember on the top of my head which uh, we can say that the advantages of kotlin over java so this is one of the examples like a data class over a pojo but there are a lot of other examples as well which we will see throughout this course so i hope this is answering you vishal Okay, so Zipinder, your question is how to know what type of data type of a variable is it? Okay, I'm not exactly getting what exactly do you mean, but uh, I've never seen this kind of thing uh, that we need to do something like this in Kotlin. So I'm not sure what exactly are you asking here, but uh, I do get the idea that how to know what type of the data type of variable so okay so let's say if you have a variable here variable let's say hello and it has some name hello so you're saying how do you know that this type this variable is a type of a string so basically you can do it using the is keyword which is the same answer that i answered you i hope this is So uh, yeah, so in Kotlin you can uh, you don't have to worry about this uh, at all. Like type of and the value ABC that you're mentioning, Kotlin uses smartcast, so you don't have to worry about that at all. So Kotlin uses smartcast, so you don't have to worry about all these things at all. So in Java you used to have to worry about this, but with Kotlin one less worry. <laughs> All right, so let's come back to ranges and resume our course. So this is another one of the features of Kotlin and let's try to create a range here. So I'll create a range from one to 10 like this. So this is an easy way to initialize a variable with values from one to 10. But in Java, what you had to do was that you create a for loop and then uh, initialize the array to uh, and run the loop from that very value to that the starting index to the end value so it's a whole bunch of code but with kotlin you have to just write it 
in a single line. So I hope this also is one of the features where you write less code in Java, uh, in Kotlin. So let's print this value. But again, we'll have to print it using a for loop here for x in 1 to 10, print all the values. All right. So let's use the dollar symbol here and print the value and run this program. Okay, so here we have created a bunch of values from 1 to 10. We can also do it to 20, 30, 40, whatever you may like. So I think 1 to 10 is good, to, good enough for now. So let's say we have to create values from 10 to 1. We have to reverse it. So either we can just say 1 to 10 dot reversed and create a new list. Well, 10 to one like this uh, either i can do like this and print this value again using the for loop all right okay and just one, another way to do this thing or i can do something like this so you can see the reverse values are printed by using the reverse keyword i can get the values into another variable or you can do something like this 10 dot down to method and pass in the last value so here let's rename this to var and we'll change the value after printing this okay let's print this again so again, we'll see the values of printing from 10 to 1. So here, this is going from 10 to 1, 10 to 1, all right. So we have the values printed from 10 to 1 here using the reversed. And then we have the values printed 10 to 1 using down to. Okay, so we can also do, we can also skip some values. Like if we have to say print, one and three then five then seven can you see there's uh, like a step of two here so we can do that as well let's use this list one to ten and one to ten step two so now initialize it to a variable well my list Okay, and then let's print out this list. Okay, printing my list. Uh, I think it would be a good idea to separate this by using a println. My list. All right. And this is using its auto. All right, and this is using reversed. Let's run this program. So we are focusing on this my list here, which should print the list from one and so on like that. One, three, five, seven, and nine. So you can use just one line of code not even a one single line it's just a small expression which will help you to build some series or ranges so which is really beneficial so there are a bunch of lot of ranges out there in kotlin which you can use as per your needs as per your uh, uh all right okay so does anybody have any more questions let's check it out Cotton class file is not a Java file, it's a separate file. Yes, right, Vishal. Cotton file is a different file. Cotton file has an extension of .kt and a Java file has an extension of .java. So we can see here, learn Cotton data types .kt and a Java file will have a .java extension over here. All right, how to print string in a console. So I believe 
we have already done that in the first line of this program println hello world so that's basically printing a string to a console this is basically a console i believe i have answered your questions up in there all right so does anybody have any more questions right now if yes please uh, comment in right now and also uh, we are coming to the end of this course of kotlin data types i have tried to answer as much as i can and uh, in the course contents of the pdf you will find the different kotlin data types and what are their sizes so you can check that out as well okay so Okay, so okay, let's just wait for a few more questions. How to print in console? Okay, similar to R. How can we kind of demolish a keyword replacing data type? Can we kind of demolish a keyword or replacing data type? I'm not sure what exactly you mean here, Jupinder. Say Z is int initially, but say after mid, we don't need anymore. We want X as character so this what your uh, uh, what your question is here it's really not a best practice here like changing the keywords data type at runtime it's really not a good practice and I would not recommend that as well if somebody is doing it so that's we shouldn't do it it's not a good coding practice all right Let's see if we have any other questions from anyone else. We have five people on this video call on this uh, live session. Does anybody have any other questions or are we happy to wrap this session off? Let's see what else we can do. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can see a bunch of other things that we can do right now. We can do is let's take an array and we can print some we can use some options in an array. Let's go back to where we were working arrays. Okay. All right. So print an array. Here we have a numbers only array. So what we can do is we can type in the first item of this array numbers only by using the taller symbol numbers only dot first. So it will print the first item in this array and we can do similarly for the last item as well. And there are a whole bunch of methods with array like the mm, index of, you can find the index of an element. Let's say I want to find the index of the element 3. So we can do that here. And we can find the index of value in array this thing and we can find the index of we can find the last index of 3 in this array so we can do last index of value 3 so let's say we have two values here we have some values here 4 5 and 3 so now we have two threes in here, one three here and the, another three is here. So the index of the value three in array will return the index which points to the first occurrence of the value three and this will point to the last index of the value three. So let's run this program. OK. 
Okay, so here we are. The last, the first item of this array is 1, which is true. We have the value 1 here. And the last item of this array is number of the array is 3, which is true. And the index of the value 3 in the array is 2, which is 0, 1, 2. The index is 2. And the last index for the value 3 is 5. So which is the last index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, so these are a bunch of methods on array which can help you out by uh, not redoing or not reinventing the wheel. So these methods are already there. So I suggest you to, I recommend you to explore more on these methods and we'll catch up in the next class very soon. And let's see for the final last time if you have any questions. There's some need on data analysis algos I'm working on. This is a question by Spinder. So I believe, I think we can take this question offline. We can try to do, achieve what exactly you're trying to do. But uh, mind me, the changing the data type of a variable later on is not a good idea. All right. So I think this is it for this video, guys. I hope you had a lot of knowledge. Please do not forget to like and comment on this video if you have any questions and do subscribe to the channel team must as you're getting this course for free so at least the least thing you can do for me is subscribe to this channel thank you so much i'll see you in the next video soon bye bye